Oh, where have you been, my blue-eyed son? And where have you been, my darling young one? Photos of pristine environments and people having a lovely time and it's, everything's very happy. I like that aspect of it. And then the extreme opposite, you know, you, you can see these really degraded environments and people having a really hard time. So it, in a way it's kind of, it's got the balance. But having said that, the end of it is actually really kind of sends you away feeling a little bit unsure about the future. I mean, it's, it's, it's nice that it's got the optimism, but at the end of the day, the exhibition as a whole makes me quite concerned about where we're going despite the fact that there's the the vital signs aspect where you're looking at Swansea where well you know there's some good opportunities happening here yeah well um, obviously it's out there in the rain but there's some fairly kind of hard-hitting photographs um, out there really about you know the, um, the impact of climate change in other countries I mean there's two boys sitting in the rainforest um, I think it's the Amazonian rainforest and it's um, it's like an intrusion from the western world um, into the rainforest. It's destroying these people's lands. Mostly the images are just so like horrible that we're here living in luxury and they're there starving without even any clean water to drink. It's really horrible. Where the people are many and their hands are all empty. And it's been interesting actually coming looking at with my son. Yes. He was looking at the there's a picture of an Inuit standing on a tiny little lump of of ice and he was just saying you know it's all going you know he's only got that one little bit he's going to drown you know because he's standing on one little piece of ice the stark reality of the photos I suppose um, so the blunt brief conveyed message that they showed it was uh, horrifying but beautiful as well and that's the best thing to say as well it's a photo of just a an area of baked soil with some bits of tree trunk just sticking out of it. Another one of just a uh, flaming trunk of a tree, basically. And I, I must admit, in a pessimistic sort of way, I see that's the way we keep on going, is the destructive. So a highway diamonds with nobody on it. Well, um, it's kind of obvious in a way because people's lifestyles in these in Western countries are just really silly, and there's just the obvious things that use up a lot of power, um, like um, heating and driving and flying and so on. So there's really some obvious points in, in people's diet. So there's some really kind of obvious things that we're um, that that are, that are just stupid in our lifestyles, um, and it's not it's not kind of anything kind of clever or technical. It's just really obvious that our lifestyles are out of control. We need to make a massive change as individuals but as a community of people we need to take a look back of where we come from and think how people lived and how they lived happily and how we got to where we are today and think we don't need all the stuff that's been pushed in our face through consumerism. The major thing is to try and put nations together. If I was a leader of the world, yeah, try to put nations together in trying to implement programs like GX programs, which are global exchange programs, which allow people from developed countries and developing countries to come together, to work together, share skills, experiences, and different things. And most uh, to involve the young people in decision-making bodies, yeah, like they should be actively participating in all levels of decision making, starting from the lowest level of decisions to the highest. Yeah, that's what I would want to see. Well, I think um, ultimately we need government to to uh, control and and legislate in the right direction. So I think it's really up to us as individuals to to pressurise government to move in the right direction. And so with lots of different organisations, I'd see them all pressurising in, in, the same, in the same line. Um, there's not like one solution, one big plan, I don't think. that. Um, yeah, it takes everybody, it takes everybody's different roles, different skills that they have, different knowledge. I think it's more about yeah, people working together and building something, that uh, a new, you know, building a new ship to sail in a different direction. I grew up in South Africa and a big issue there is common grazing. 
And so each individual family obviously wants to have as many cattle and use the common grazing as much as possible. But there isn't enough grazing for everyone. So I really see it as needing to coordinate our natural resources, make sure that they adequately control at a, at a coordinated level and make sure that individual families and households have the incentive to look after the whole. And I'll tell it and speak it and think it and breathe it. On a personal level, it's that always that trying to realise that every action, everything you do has an effect and it's just trying to keep on remembering it. It's very easy not to think about, oh, I'll just get my car and drive there and, oh, this looks nice, I'll buy this. But it's actually trying to realise the consequence of everything you do. I think it's a matter of each of us individually taking responsibility for how we look after the environment around us, plus you know, obviously lobbying our politicians at a local and national level to, to bring in the coordinated change. I think the great thing about the exhibition is that you know, you, you look at China and the amount of stuff it's pumping into the air, and you look at America and you think it's hopeless. But it is just do the one thing, isn't it? It's trying to find one thing that will make a small difference uh, in our own community. Uh, we can't change the world, but we can change the world that we live in. So I suppose that's... The last time I came here, two years ago, when, when this was launched, the last time, and um, I think I took that away, thinking, all right, what can I do? So I went and bought a, you know, I went and bought a composter, so the peelings all go in there now, and I'm quite sure to, to do with all the compost I've got, but at least it hasn't gone into a landfill site. So uh, I think it is just, and it's making people aware, isn't it? If it's on the agenda, if people can see and read about it, at least it makes people aware of what, what the problems are. We could like plant more trees and um, flowers to let the bugs enjoy our world. And I think it's trying to get that message across to people is also really important that everything you do has an effect. And it's it doesn't mean you've got to be a complete killjoy, but it's just realizing that. Um, well, OK, I'm already, I already don't drive, don't fly, and I'm vegan. And I think that's what everyone should do. So what I need to do is be really happy and comfortable with those things and persuade other people to do the same. <laughs> yeah, I suppose, like, donating to charities and things. Like, yeah. every bit, like, we can't help everyone, but everybody can help someone. And something we always tend to do is go to charity shops because there's perfectly good toys and often new things there. So it's often trying to get second-hand um, and reusing things and trying to instill it in the kids that it's just as good as the new things, not often better. You could possibly buy things that you'll actually need, like not things that you won't use. Well, it's sustainable, really, the, what you buy, um, food, clothing, anything, so that you buy it stuff that lasts, uh, food that's local, and general energy efficiency would be another one, I suppose and to uh, buy for good suppliers. I heard the sound of the thunder that roared out a warning.